Okay, welcome to a new video. First of all, I want to apologize for a few things. First of all, it's been a busy couple weeks, so this video has a really long gap between this one and the other one. So hopefully that won't continue. I'm going to try and be a little bit more regular, and hopefully the streams will come back here soon. I'm going to try and stream a little more often and flip a few settings around to hopefully make it a little more visible, a little more enjoyable. Also, I am holding the mic this time because I ordered a boom arm and I changed some settings and I really tried to make the mic better quality. So if it seems like it's better quality, let me know in the comments that it sounds better, sounds worse, et cetera, et cetera, too loud, too quiet, whatever. I'm trying to get it nailed down and really, you know, achieve the YouTuber dream. Anyway, this video, I want to talk about some of the actual advantages of modern bug bounty and bug bounty hunting and the scene and the platforms and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of people that talk about how there's disadvantages to now versus when the scene was younger and talk about some of the harder things. And we will touch on those a little bit throughout the video and right away at the beginning, some of the big ones. But I really want to talk about some of the advantages that I think some people maybe aren't or like don't take full advantage of that maybe they should. So let's get right into it. So. There are, of course, disadvantages that you hear about all the time on Twitter and from other new bug bounty hunters and stuff like that, right? So, of course, there's way more people bug bounty hunting now than there used to be. So that, of course, will create more competition naturally. A lot of the targets, especially big targets with well-known companies, are much more hardened now than especially they were in the past. That doesn't mean that you can't find the obscure subdomain that is... 20 years old and isn't touched or something that isn't updated and that it's completely not hardened and very easy to to pwn but a lot of the main targets and especially a lot of their main applications will be hardened so that of course makes it harder for bug bounty hunters today and especially when you look at certain vulnerabilities like xss or sql injection like stuff like that the way some people used to pop it maybe 10 years ago versus how often you see like very simple payloads work now is a pretty good example of how that works. The other thing coming along with this is some of the technologies that people are hacking now, such as OAuth and some of these complex ways people get SSRF and, and maybe stuff like that lead to kind of a larger learning curve when you're first joining the scene or when you're first, you know, trying to get into bug bounties. Um, again, there are ways around this, just like for hardened targets, you can try and find the forgotten about targets. With the larger learning curve, there are certain bug types that don't take such a large learning curve, like maybe authorization bugs, maybe something very simple that doesn't take a lot of like coding knowledge or anything like that, but is really not that difficult to, to lock down how to find them or how to hunt for them at least, and you can improve pretty quickly. There are other disadvantages. These are just like some of the bigger ones that you hear about, and I'm sure you can make the list ongoing, but... There are some advantages that I think people should be taking advantage of with the modern scene. So the first one of those, of course, is learning resources. Originally, techniques were much more closed off. There's a few things like Mailworm and stuff like that and ExploitDB, you know, as stuff started to modernize or started to progress. But a lot of the techniques originally were much more closed off and you kind of had to know someone that would you know, teach you or you had to find people on Twitter or Reddit or stuff like that. And the resources that did exist normally weren't like, here's how you do SQL injection. It's like, okay, this is how people did SQL injection on like these certain things, or these are just a list of payloads that they used, but it doesn't really match technology to payload or why this is that. It's just like, there wasn't really a, a go, there wasn't a port swigger web academy, right? Like it didn't exist. Like a, you can go here and learn all this stuff about SQL injection or learn all this stuff about XSS or web security in general. It was kind of a pick and choose sort of landscape where now bug bounty hunters have way more options for learning. You have all different kinds of mediums. You have books, you have videos, you have hands-on labs, you have workshops and conferences, you have content creators. And there is a little blurb there and I will put the link in the description, but Insider PhD, who's another great content creator, is doing a series with Bug Crowd about bug bounty. And I'm pretty sure as of the date of this recording, the most recent video or maybe the second most recent video is one about learning resources and all the different learning resources you can utilize, where to find them, how to use them, what she recommends, all that kind of stuff. So I would go look at that video. It'll be in the description and check it out. If you're looking for this plethora of learning options that new bug bounty hunters have to take advantage of. 
Okay. The second one is that there are now targets everywhere. Back in the day, it was like three targets on Hacker One. And if you didn't like those three targets, you were kind of out of luck. If you really wanted to try and lock down a bounty, there were really only a few targets that regularly paid and you weren't just crossing your fingers, hoping they decided to give you a bounty. And the platforms weren't really mature, making programs a lot more volatile and, you know, response times really shaky. And there weren't stats to really know what programs were responding well and not well and stuff like that, where now a lot of the programs, especially the bigger programs or more mature programs have very visible and easy to understand stats so you can see which ones respond fast average bounties what hackers are also on those programs doing well and it's very very easy to pick ones that kind of fit your hacking style right the other thing as far as targets everywhere like the title says is a lot of these platforms comes with huge lists of targets now so there's not just one, two, or three locked to each platform. There's huge lists of targets, and especially as you start getting invites to private programs, there's targets upon targets of all different kinds. So if you're a hardware hacker, there's options. If you're a mobile hacker, there's options. Web, there's obviously a bajillion options, but the point is there's so many options. So even with the disadvantage that we talked about earlier of a lot of hunters being in the scene now, with this many targets, I would kind of argue that yeah, I mean, people are spread so thin, especially once you get off the main targets and the big name targets and kind of find one that you like to hack and that you can really dig into. The competition really isn't as big as you would think. The third one is tooling. And this one, I think, is the biggest one for me because I'm an automation person and a tool guy. And I know a lot of people like doing that kind of thing. Right. So even not that long ago, there was not this huge list of open source tools for everything you want to do just didn't exist. Most tools were either a Nessus or a something behind a paywall or were scripts that people made and created and used for their own stuff, but kind of didn't really open source it and kept secret that kind of culture didn't totally exist yet. So there wasn't like, oh, I want to do subdomain enumeration. So like which of the 20 subdomain enumerating tools am I going to use this time? you kind of were really either stuck to one or maybe you had to write your own or something like that. And some processes only really had one option for a tool, right? So, you know, we could say a burp suite thing. I mean, zap came along pretty early, but like burp suite was pretty dominant. Like if you're using a web proxy, you you could use Zap, but most people were using burp, right? If you were fuzzing, there was like way back in the beginning was like Derby, I think. Right. And then a whole bunch of stuff came after that, but Back then, there was only a few things, you know, like a mass DNS, stuff like that. Like, there wasn't these huge options for resolvers and port scanners. Like, it was just Nmap. It was just some of these tools where now you have this insane amount of open source tooling and you have options. And do you like Rust tools? Do you like Go tools? Do you like CLI tools? Do you like tools with GUIs? Like, what do you like to do? There are even open source frameworks now, like Recon for the win. If you really just want to plug and play, put in your API keys and go which is of course an easy option and there's different options for every type of tool. You don't like burp, use zap. You don't like burp or zap, use Kaido. You don't like uh, FFUF, use WFuzz. If you don't like either of those, use GoBuster. If you don't want to use a mass, use subfinder. It, you know, it's all different kinds of stuff. Nmap versus mass scan versus Nabu, stuff like that for port scanning. There's so many options for everything for all different kinds of tools that you can make your own personal little tool belt now out of just open source tools and basically have all your bases covered where unless you're really, really interested in covering some of the more peculiar niches, you don't really have to go create a bunch of your own tooling anymore, which is really nice. And I think that is an advantage that a lot of people coming into the scene now have that back then they didn't have. Now there's a lot of content out there and a lot of stuff out there for you to set up certain tooling and basically at least at bare minimum automate some recon to get you started where you can just put in a target bash script runs and you have some targets to go after you at least have some stuff to start and you maybe run fuff on some of those targets and you directory brute force and use gal and find some stuff passively and there you go and you're off to the races and just like that using open source tools that are available now that weren't maybe available when hacker one and stuff first came out you can you know really get hacking much sooner those are kind of the ones that i had that's really the big three advantages that I wanted to talk on. Again, I'm sure there's more. These are the big three that came to mind for me that I think 
current bug bounty hunters, especially ones newer to the scene, should really lean in and take advantage of. Really learn about the tooling, really take advantage of all the learning resources out of there, out there, sorry, to accelerate your learning faster than maybe someone who started in the scene earlier. All that kind of stuff. Don't just harp on the disadvantages. Really take advantage of the fact that the, the whole bug bounty hunting scene as a whole has matured so much and use it to really accelerate faster than maybe someone could a while ago. Anyway, one last thing. I put it in my last video and I'm going to put it in this one. I have a Discord link on my Twitter and it will be in the description of this video. If you would join the Discord, there is going to be a survey there pinned about a bug bounty event that hopefully we'll be doing through the Discord channel if anyone is interested. I'm not exactly sure what it will look like yet, but I would like as many people that are interested in participating in something like that to fill out the survey and get answers. I'm going to let it go for another week or two here, which will be like a month total. And then after that, I'm going to look at some of the answers and maybe that will hopefully help come up with something that the event will be. So if you're interested in that, join the Discord and do the survey. Other than that, Thanks for listening. We'll love to hear your feedback in the comments, what you think other advantages are, disadvantages, stuff like that. Otherwise, good luck hunting and see you in the next one.